good for? It's about time! It's about time that I released this video because I kept you waiting for a couple of weeks now. But let's start from the beginning, from the very beginning. Medieval Times was a playground where all the ingenuity of torture devices flourished. From Iron Maidens to Knee Splitters, all the way to the famous Rack and Judas Cradle, all this was to inflict physical pain, injury or even death as a punishment. But in our modern society, we lean more to the side of a mental torture, whether it's passive-aggressive behavior, intimidation or social pressure. But that's not all. We now also have Crash Bandicoot 4. So you like a dosa crates, yeah? Yeah, you want a platinum trophy, okay, yeah? You want, yes? Well, guess what? You need to sell your soul to the devil to get it. Wait, what is in there? Something scary. I can hear it, can't you? Oh my god! So let's start from the beginning again, shall we? Crash Bandicoot 4 is a long-awaited sequel to Crash Bandicoot Warped. It's chronologically taking place right after the events of the third installment, luckily nullifying all the shitty entries that came after that. Not including Crash Team Racing and Crash Bash, The Wrath of Cortex, Twin Sanity, Crash of the Titans and Mind of the Mutant were miles apart from the nostalgic magic of the original series. Everything went downhill when the rights to Crash Bandicoot were sold to Activision, but in 2013 a rumor began to spread that Sony had bought the publishing rights from Activision. This started to breathe light into the future of this franchise, after being dead for a decade. Yes, dead. Although new games did come out, the quality of them was as good as a product from Wish.com or a, or a funky clone of one of the Baldwin brothers. Fans did need to wait a bit though. In 2017 we got Insane Trilogy, a remaster of the original games, three of them, that was remarkable, a trip down memory lane, done good. 2019 we got Crash Team Racing Remaster and the race was on. Now finally in 2020 we got the official new release of Crash Bandicoot a sequel to once loved trilogy. But how does this game compare? Opinions can be polarizing, but to be honest, the game is awesome and yet frustrating. The reason why this review took so long becomes apparent really soon. Graphics are wonderful and the gameplay feels exactly as in the previous games and remasters. This time there is a yellow circle under your character. You know, this makes your jumps a bit more easier. You can turn it off in the menu, but I decided to keep it and it's quite adorable, this new add-on. The story is simple enough. Recover all the powerful quantum masks to prevent Neo Cortex and Entropy from enslaving the multiverse. Thus, the whole dimension of new ideas can be unlocked. You travel in time and space, in future and in the past. By the way, all the missions even tell you when and where you are, so that is that is fantastic. You can play as several characters, Crash, Coco, Dingo Dial and Cortex, even Twana. Crash and Coco will play similar and are both used in most missions, but Dingo Dial, Cortex and Twana can be played in mission-specific locations. And let me tell you, there is nothing worse than playing with Cortex. Limited moves, almost impossible aiming mechanics, low jumps and dash feature that will make you crazy. Tuana has this some sort of a projectile ninja rope that launches out and attacks a lot of stuff and pulls you up or even kills enemies. You know, it's fun enough, fun enough gameplay. And Dingo Dial, well, he, he, he has this vacuum cleaner that sucks in enemies, crates, dynamites and so on. It's fun. It's actually fun. Plus, he can even hover using uh, using uh, his vacuum cleaner as a leaf blower. Yeah. But the main focus is still on Crash and Coco. You can unlock a lot of costumes for them, even the retro Crash skin. You know, <laughs> I use this most of the game. This time, there's a lot of new things to collect. Crystals are gone, and they are overtaken by gems. You can now collect about 12 gems per level. Six in the original version of the level, getting 80% of uh, Wumpa fruit will yield you three gems on its own. All the boxes will get you another gem, finding a hidden gem in the level will also grant you one, and the most difficult one, don't die more than three times and you will get the final sixth one. But you said 12! But you can now also do the same level in inverted mode. Thus, another 6 can be collected. Inverted mode is basically the same level but turned into like a mirror mode with a new color filter added. 
quite trippy. Plus, you need to get four color gems as well, which themselves are very difficult to get. Well, some of them. When you have collected all the gems, all the four gems, the special gems, you can now access this part in the game. This level here is made by a sadist. Holy moly. I mean, if you attempted this level and didn't cry, please let me know in the comment section, because I, I attempted this three times, three days to be exact, and you know, three full evenings, about 10 hours altogether. 10 hours altogether. You know, can you imagine? I even saw collecting crates in my dreams. I literally got quite insane attempting this. I will just, you know, let this part play for you for a sec. Learning all the tiny moments, landing spots and timing of everything, it was just mental. The point of all those levels is to get all the quantum masks, there are four of them. Each one gives you a special power, but those can be equipped one at a time in predetermined locations only. Lani Lolly can phase items in and out from your dimension, thus the box or a spot to land will only exist in another dimension, so in the midair you need to react and phase them into your existence. Akano is a violent spin that lets you break all the crates and jump into miraculous heights. By the way, you can also use double jump while this mask is on. Kupuna Va slows down time and basically allows you to jump on nitro crates for a brief second. Ika Ika reverses gravity and messes with your mind as you need to perform a horrendous jump from the ceiling to the floor over the electric fence on some TNT crates to jump back to the ceiling on a moving platform. And now can you imagine yourself going through this gauntlet of all those powers while trying to collect all the crates in one continuous jump sequence? Yeah. As far as collectibles go, you can also acquire tapes. Those can only be collected while you haven't died a single time in that level till you can finally grab it and then you need to get to the checkpoint after that, or else you will lose the day. Tapes are basically a new type of special bonus level that you can play, a glimpse of uh, past crashes or cortex experiments with crash to be more specific. Now there are also relics that can be acquired in time trials, just finish the level under a certain amount of time while collecting time crates. For, for me almost impossible, because that means that you need to complete each level three more times without dying. Nope, not gonna happen. But wait, that's not all. Now there are also insanely perfect relics. <laughs> To get that, you need to get all the boxes in the level and complete the level without dying once in a single run. Well, you know, I, I give up. I, I don't know how other people feel playing this game, but for trophies I, I don't even bother anymore. What I love that this game goes back to the roots of the old map, where you have those islands and the islands have their levels and you know, you can basically teleport from one island to the next and it's lovely. I really love the graphical design of this. It looks awesome. So yeah, this game is fun, colorful, refreshing and easy if you are there just for the story. Now, I've heard that people are complaining that this game is short, and that's ridiculous. It's easily one of the longest games in 2020. In my 35 hours, I only managed to get all the crates from most of the levels. I I've done only maybe a handful of inverted levels and still need to complete the alternative timeline levels, which are basically a character specific, uh, you know, start of another part of the same level that you already completed with Crash, but now you need to complete it again. Except the beginning is a bit different, but the ending is a copy paste. And also I need to start the tape levels, but I still need to get another 30 tapes or so, which I didn't in the first playthrough. So time trials also, you know, insanely perfect relics are out of the question even. <laughs> it's easily about 200 hours worth of agony. For me this game was fun until I really tried to, you know, complete it. And that made me frustrated. I, I, I play for fun. 
but I felt like this was a chore or a punishment. Even the final boss was disappointing. The build-up was non-existent. Since the beginning intro sequence, we didn't learn anything new. And, and when the culmination finally hit, it was over before I knew it. Easiest boss in the game. Easily. The, the, the most easiest boss, you know, the final boss is easy. <laughs> Also, there were a few levels which I didn't understand at all. Your skills, all your muscle memory was basically taken away with this one level. I had to learn new controls, it was like playing a totally new, a different game. Just, you know, sad. All the masks sliding on rails and stuff, yeah, it's fun, it's new elements, like, I mean, it's fun, it's like 2020, you know, new things. But please don't make the game impossible. Don't make me hate the game. <laughs> Loading screens are long and your death count per level will surely go over a hundred. So please consider that when you buy this game and begin your journey. All in all, I give Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time a 6.5 out of 10. And I hope that you at least enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like, smash that bell, and if you dare, subscribe as well. I'm Silly Lamas and thanks for watching. Till next time.